Today we'll be looking at the Yeti SB130 and testing it through the rigors of the Outdoor Gold Enduro to see if this is the bike for you. But first, this ride is brought to you in partnership with Ruby Canyon Cycles in Grand Junction, Colorado. They are the only Yeti and Specialized dealer in the Grand Valley. So if you want to get out here and test ride and demo the Yeti SB130 for yourself, you know who to call. That would be Ruby Canyon Cycles, 3rd and Main in Grand Junction. Introducing the Yeti SB130, the most recent 2018 addition to their modern 29er lineups that include the SB150 and 100 models. With 150 millimeters of fork travel and 130 millimeters of rear, this 130 really bridges the gap between its siblings, the 150 and the 100. Is it a trail bike? Is it an all mountain? Is it enduro? Well, we're gonna give this a proper investigation coming right up. Let's chat briefly about the geometry and components for this bike. Now, I'm 6'1", so I will be riding a large frame. Starting with the head tube, we have an angle of 65 and a half degrees, a chain stay of 433 millimeters, a seat tube of approximately 77 degrees, a wheel base of 1230 millimeters, and a bottom bracket height of 337.7 millimeters. For reference, the 130 is gonna have an 18 millimeter shorter wheelbase than the 150. But enough with all this nerd talk. You're gonna to go to the Yeti Cycles website in the description and see more detail. Like in previous reviews, it's important to note that I'm not gonna get into crazy detail about the actual components on this bike. Yes, components make or break a bike, but they don't really deliver on the true nature of the bike. But let's talk about what we have. We'll be riding a classic. The Fox Factory 36 Fit 4 Fork, the extremely capable Fox DPX2 rear shock, DT Swiss 1700 splines, the SRAM Eagle X01 drivetrain with carbon cranks and a GX cassette, and Shimano dual piston XT brakes. Also on this build, we'll be rolling with a triple compound Maxxis Max Terra 2.5 DHF front tire backed with a 2.3 aggressor tire. Aesthetically, the design of the 130 is not much different than its big brother, the 150. You can now fit a water ball cage inside the front triangle protecting it from dirt and cow pies. Next, the great feature that I love is the guided internal routing that really takes the burden off professional and at-home mechanics while silencing cable rattle for YouTube. Continuing on, the rear shock setup really splits the difference between the SB100 and 150. Like the 100, the shock mounts as a top tube, yet is similar to the 150 that the stanchion side installs to the wishbone extension. Good stuff, but that's not all. What's really cool about this is that the new Yeti SB Metric 29ers all come with an integrated headset in the frame. But. stage is set. The time has come for the Outdoor Gold Enduro, a fiery furnace of a test to see if this bike can handle your local trails. We'll be throwing the gauntlet of variety at this thing with stage one being the fast and flow test of 18 road mixed with some small jumps. I'd like to follow this up with a grueling climb and vicious slow speed downhill of Fruta's most technical trail called Morphine. Finally, we'll wrap up the test ride of Grand Junction's full-on enduro trail called Free Lunch. Nothing is free in the outdoor gold enduro, but I'm sure the SB130 is up to the task. Stage one, the North Fruita Desert. Fast and flowy trails are the name of the game here on beginner to intermediate terrain. Oh yeah. I love this bike already. It has what it takes. At PBR, it didn't take long to see the high floor of the 130. Despite the 29 inch wheels, this bike really felt eerily similar to my flagship SB6. In fact, I found cornering superior in tight turns and berms. It really casts a vibe that you're carving up the slope with every turn on a smaller bike. 
Also, even though this bike is quite light, especially for its class, the 130 held great momentum through changing terrain. The ride was quick, decisive, and responsive, a solid mix between stiffness of the Turk materials and the wheelbase specifications. I also noted that poor decisions were met with excellent recovery. On Joe's Bridge, this bike performed as expected. The 130 held solid stability on steep downhill with bountiful brake bumps. I was really amazed at how comfortable this bike is and how it carved up the turns while sinking the side knobs into the ground. It also transitions between terrain very quickly, giving riders a real edge with an optimal head tube angle for the descent and a C tube angle that's just ready to climb when that opportunity arises. On jumps, this bike displayed serious potential as a very flickable and capable ride. It's easy to say that I had a great time on military rain at 18 Road, but we have just seen the tip of the iceberg. We didn't even bottom the suspension out, which leads us to our next test. Stage two, more fun the most technically challenging trail in Fruta with a whole host of hellacious climbs and unpredictable downhills. The terrain here is unrelenting, but engaging and a rider must work for every penny earned. A good ride here demands attention to detail and trust in the bike. Can we trust the 130? During the climbs, it epitomized everything great about the famous Yeti pedaling efficiency with the rear shock in full open. The weight of this bike overall is the perfect mix, and I can't emphasize enough at how much I enjoy that, that 77 degree C2. I found great success pulling the bars up and then pushing them forward to raise the rear tire above crucial features. The climbing capabilities and potential of the 130 was easily its strength with a very high ceiling in the category, but it could take some getting used to. Slow and steady wins the day here. However, the SB130 made quick work of many of these features. The light back end makes this bike very flickable, controllable, and maneuverable. Tight turns and switchbacks and slabs all fell before the front tire of the 130 as it cleaned them up very quickly. At slower speeds, I didn't find the platform to be the most stable that I've ever ridden, yet that recovery and responsive design really slipped past the cracks. I also found this bike to transition between that varying terrain, a very quick and very natural process. A perfect bike for taking a big hit followed by a punchy climb. Speaking of big hits. and the chips are on the table for one final evaluation. Free lunch, a trail where the feast here is not offered on a silver platter. This enduro style trail eats poor decisions for breakfast and more often than not, bikes and equipment are at constant risk of catastrophic damage. This full on enduro style trail doesn't mess around, but does the 130 have what it takes? Free lunch, the place where bike parts go to die. Just wrapped up free lunch and uh, got a little hairy on one's butt, but the thing that really stood out to me right here, right now, is how much control you have with this thing. The 130 does work on drops and double black diamond moves, and it doesn't really take long to feel out the enduro nature of this bike. But it's definitely gonna have a different flavor from standard six inch travel enduro bikes. On our six foot drops and landings, they all felt great on the 130 with the Fox DPX2, which turned out to be a great marriage between the frame and the rear shock. A more gradual, chunky sections, the 130 really had no problems blowing through them, but you'll definitely notice a more general playful rear tire. It's going to get bucked around a little bit. 
but this can be a huge advantage to the right rider that commands a more playful bike to fit into their style. So let's dig into our post Outdoor Gold Enduro review. Let's chat about what I liked about the SB130. First, it can do it all with tentacles gripping into the tertiary attributes of the respective SB150 and SB100 models. The 130 is a little more than lightning in a bottle, and I feel it really fills in a solid niche of a high-end trail build with a mid-enduro riding style. The 130 climbs exceptionally well with the modern progressive geometry, steep C-tube angle and switch infinity linkage, which is just the gold standard in pedaling efficiency. I can't stress this enough. I love the progressive geometry and I feel these updates alone are a slam dunk. I enjoy how responsive this bike is. I'm amazed by its recovery in terms of speed, stability, and maneuverability. The key strength to me is how this bike transitions between terrain. You can take a big hit and then crush a punchy climb around the corner. I really don't have a problem with going on record to say that I really dig the guided internal cable routing that eliminates cable rattle. The interior mounting of the water ball cage and the lifetime warranty all really stand out to me. Yeti always stands behind their warranty. I've had zero problems. I also find the integrated headset to be a really interesting feature that eliminates extra parts and additional creaking that come from headset cups while also reinforcing the head tube. Now it's time to face the music and critique this bike, and of course, I'll throw some context around it. As always, I can't stress this enough. This could be the bike for you, and ultimately your interest should be based on your riding style, goals, local trails, and bankroll. As far as design, similar issues remain in comparison to the SB150. The down tube still remains front leaning to make room for the water bottle cage interior mount. Poor judgment in riding could result in plastering the down tube into a rock or on a challenging step up or high clearance logs. Again, I stress that this is the trade off for the interior water bottle cage mount. And it's worth considering that an underslung mount is perhaps more susceptible to cow pies and sand on that water bottle, which is definitely not good for your teeth. Basically, really don't foresee this being a looming deal breaking issue. But we're not done talking about that water bottle cage mount. Keep in mind that not every water bottle is going to be able to fit perfectly in a mount. I've read reports of water bottles rubbing against rear shocks. It's a really, really tight fit, and that's what I saw on my test. But I did not see any evidence of such activity on this bike. Most of this is really going to come down to the size of water bottle and type of cage, and which I also highly recommend using a side cage, by the way. In this ride, we had a 2.3 Max's aggressor, but word on the street is that a 2.4 is the maximum rear tire size for the 130. I tested an alternative rear tire with Ryan, the owner of Ruby Canyon. We slapped on a 2.6 Specialized Purgatory and didn't have any problems. Granted, the Purgatory definitely runs in the smaller end of the 2.6 sizing. Just keep in mind that sizing is sort of different all across the board, so take this with a grain of salt. So who is this bike for? People who like to ride premium mountain bikes that don't compromise on performance. As I said, this bike really does everything well and it has a really high floor and a high ceiling in areas outside of its discipline. Intermediate and beginner riders can really grow on this platform in all facets of mountain biking. I personally think the riders that are really going to benefit the most are going to be advanced, seasoned, veteran bikers. Riders that really know what they want in a bike and know how to make it work into a trail. This bike has the best in class performance in climbing and it's dependable yet nimble on the downhills. It's definitely park worthy. And for our pro riders out there, this is a bike that the most skilled riders can really exceed the ceiling on. And in some cases, they might really want that. In my opinion, it's not going to overpower the SB150 on the downhills again. But on some single tracks, this could be the right tool for the job, especially for riders with lighter body builds and strong skill sets. Now we have the all important question, would I buy this bike? It's repetitive, but absolutely yes. I love this bike, even compared to the other builds in mind. It fits my current riding style perfectly, which is moderately aggressive. To me, this bike really felt kind of at home on the flow trails, but on more violent terrain, it would definitely take some serious time behind the bars to grasp a mastery of this ride. 
What I mean is it requires some changes to your riding style that A, is gonna make you a better rider, and B, force you to take some optimal lines. I love how it transitions between terrain. It's very playful and lively. The geometry and the climbing efficiency, this bike really kills it. The SB130 is a prime example of having your cake and eating it too. But the only things that I would change are integrating a 160mm replacement for the 150mm fork and adding a 170mm dropper such as the PNW Bachelor. Modern suspension is exponentially improving annually and this bike really is a testament to that fact that less is sometimes more. But don't take it from me, Jason with Jason Bikes has owned his for a couple of months and he'll give us some key points. Really nice pedaling platform, stable. Um, when I descend, I mean it's a totally different bike than what I used to ride, but it still feels like something I can control. What don't I like? Yeah. I haven't found it yet. Boom! Right there, there's our review. Yeah. And there you have it. Thanks, Jason. Let me know in the comments, what do you like about the SB130? Is there anything that I missed? This is Mountain Biking Gold. If you enjoy the content, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any mountain biking. We'll catch you all down the road.